It wouldn't be right to do a video series on the uses of volume data without considering the on balance volume indicator. This is one of the most widely used volume based indicators and when analysed in conjunction with price action it sheds new light on what is making the market move and provides clues about the future movements that are unique to this type of indicator. Stay tuned. So far in this video series on trading volume, we've covered the use of what I call pure volume data. But just like there are indicators that use price action as their data input, there are also indicators that use volume data as theirs. One of the most popular and commonly used is an indicator called on balance volume. I'll be taking the covers off this indicator and looking at how it works and how it can be used to aid your probability based decision making when looking to trade the markets. Let's first briefly look at the background to this indicator. This indicator was first created and documented by Joseph Granville and this was way back in 1963 and the book he documented it in was called New Key to Stock Market Profits. Now, I'm not recommending this book, I've never actually read it, but it is still in publication and from what I can see it gets fairly good reviews. Now, Joseph talks about the way that this concept of unbalanced volume looks at the volume flow and specifically looks at it to aid predictions of future price movements. This is an indicator that has a cumulative calculation. And what do I mean by that? Well, the value for any bar uses the previous bar's indicator value as a starting point, and then either adds or subtracts a value to that. And this is one of the main distinguishing features between the on balance volume indicator and standard volume analysis. Typically, with these cumulative calculation indicators, often the value of the indicator isn't important at all. And that's the case for OBV. What is important is both the shape and the direction of the indicator's line, especially when you compare this to the shape and direction of the price action. Even though the OBV indicator is based on volume data, it looks very different to a typical volume output. And as you can see, it looks like an oscillator. So let's take a closer look at how this is calculated. If we want to calculate the on balance volume at a particular time T, as I said before, we have to take the previous value from the previous bar or T minus one, and then we simply either add or subtract the volume on the current bar. But what is it that determines whether we add or subtract? Well, for that, we look at the direction of the current bar. And if the direction is up, we add the volume. And if the direction is down, then we subtract the volume. And it really is as simple as that. Now, this gives us what's called the volume flow. So if the OBV indicator is rising, we know that the price is probably also rising and the extent that OBV is rising depends on how much volume there was. And it's just the converse if the indicator is moving downwards. So what's the rationale behind this? Well, if you think about it, at any point in time, if the price goes up, so does the OBV. But it's the volume behind the move that determines how much it goes up. And likewise, if the price goes down for any bar, then OBV will always go down also. But again, the extent of that fall will depend on the amount of volume. And because there's that discrepancy between how much the price action's moving and how much the OBV indicator is moving, it means we can determine the factor of volume and how important that is. And often traders consider that the strength of the rises and the falls in the OBV are actually a lot more meaningful 
than the strength of the rises and falls in the price action alone. And this is where the value of OBV begins to become apparent. So let's look at a couple of examples. So at the top here, we have a simulation of some price action and below a possible representation of what the OBV might look like. But for that exact same price movement, sometimes the OBV will look very different. And it's the volume that determines which of these OBV representations is occurring. So the example on the left here gives us a clue that this is a weaker trend because it has lower volume. And on the right, this is a much stronger trend because we know the volume is higher, pushing that OBV indicator much more steeply upwards. And this information can be used to great effect when using the OBV indicator to help us determine what the likelihood of the next move in the price action is. And that's exactly what I'll be looking at next time putting this indicator into practice on real charts. And then in the next episode after this, I'll be looking at some alternatives to the OBV indicator. And the two that I'm going to focus on are accumulation distribution and the money flow index. So please do remember to tune in for that next episode. If you've got value from today, then please remember to give me a like. And now until next time, Trade wise, trade safe.